Hello, my front porch friend. I'm so glad you could join me in the mill house tonight where I have just begun my holiday decorating. Now, I mean, just begun. In fact, I have just, the only thing I've done so far is got up, I've gotten up my bare nativity. Now, excuse the dirty dishes, but is he, are they not just so cute? Oh my goodness. Now, look, I want you, there's my husband. Rick, wave, wave at my front porch friends. Come closer, Rick, come closer. Look out there, there is my husband. Look at this, I didn't even know he was out there. There he is, waving, see, he's taking Lily out. So there is my favorite man in the whole wide world, right there. <laughs> anyway, so, what I wanna to talk to you about today is your holiday preparations. You know, I know now here in America, we usually kick off our holidays with Thanksgiving. And then this leads straight into the next, what, five weeks or so till Christmas. But wherever you're watching this from, I mean, kind of the whole world starts preparing, decorating, getting everything ready. And, and maybe like many of us, you're getting ready for family to come over. I know I'll, and then, in fact, tomorrow, this whole mill house will be filled with my kids and grandkids and my sister, and her family and all of them. But, you know, maybe this year you're gonna to go to someone else's house instead of having them come to yours. Or maybe maybe you're not going anywhere and maybe there's no one else coming over and you may not even be able to hear from your family this year for many kinds of reasons. But whether you're going to their house, they're coming to yours, or whether you hear from them at all, it makes no difference for what God is going to do in your family in this holiday season. And we're just gonna start it off right, you and me right now, the first week it begins, you and I are going to come into agreement that over these next, what will it be, at least five or six weeks, we are decreeing in agreement that this holiday season, I love it like this because we talked about this, I think last year, holiday really means holy days, okay? So these next six weeks of holy days, they're going to be, and you, aren't you to agree with me for me, for, with me, for your family and mine, these next six weeks of holiday, holy days, they're going to be the greatest holiday season. This is going to be the greatest one we've ever had, ever. That this holiday season, you and I, we're going to experience, we're in agreement, I'm agreeing with you for your family, you're going to see family restoration this season. You are going to see the manifestation of a move of God, of peace that's coming to your family this holiday season. You are going to see over these next few weeks, supernatural, spiritual awakening in family members in your household. You're going to see like family revival. Now you and I are going to put our faith in agreement in Jesus' name. If two agree on earth is touching anything they ask, then it will be done. How will I know? Because we're praying according to the will of God. So we, I love to talk about that. We'll talk about it some more later. See, the, here's the deal. This is why I wanted to talk to you about this tonight. Because you are the key. You are the key for what God wants to do in your family. How do I say that? Why do I say that? Because you are the intercessor. It's why God has you with me on the front porch. It's where, front, it's where intercessors live. You are the intercessor. It is your prayer that is the key. And so I decree over you strength. I declare over you supernatural grace. That's why the enemy's been fighting you. But he has lost. You're about to see a revival. In Jesus' name. Now, I, the, what I heard for you today was so important. I had to write some of it down so I wouldn't miss anything. I have to remind you of some things we talk about because it's too important. You are the conduit. You're the one, you, that God is going to get his will through you to move into your family. It's going to come through you, what God is going to do in your family. I believe that. I believe that. In fact, let me just sit down. Pull up. We'll let you just pull up one of these little stools with me. I got one for you right here. 
Did you pull up right here beside me? I'm gonna talk to you. Here's the good part that we already know is that when we pray, when we pray, I tell you this a lot, because it's true. According to his will, what? We can have what we ask for. Can you quote that verse with me yet? It's 1 John 5, 14. I want you to memorize it so we can say it together often. It says this, and this is our confidence in the New Living Translation. And this is our confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have whatever we ask. So what you and I are going to pray today, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you at least five ways, five things specific that you're going to pray over your family for this holiday season. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give you at least five. I'm just going to hit them fast, but they're very important to kick the season off this week. All right. Now, <clears throat> All five of these things are according to the will of God. I don't, there's no need to pray anything else. Because again, when you pray the will of God, you're, you're praying what he's wanting to do anyway already in the earth. And when you pray according to his will, what? You are co-laboring with God. You're co-laboring with God to manifest what he's wanting to do anyway in the earth. So how does God manifest his will in the earth? Through men and women of faith, through men and women of prayer, that's how God brings his will from heaven to the earth. And, I, and this is the truth, sweetheart. God is not going to do this by himself. You can't just sit around. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. God's waiting on us. He, you're, you're, God's not just going to come and do this all by himself. And heaven knows we sure can't do this by ourselves. No, it was God's idea to co-labor with us. It's overwhelming to think about, but it's the truth. See, in the natural, I've been looking lately on Pinterest sometimes, you know. I, uh, I like to look the, on there probably a little too much, getting ideas, but I've noticed you got in, on Pinterest, you see all these holiday checklists. Everybody's got their little holiday checklist. You start checking off, you know, you do this so many weeks before the holiday. You, then you do this the third week, then you do this the second week, and you got your little holiday checklist. Well, tonight, or today, we've got our holiday checklist. And so you and I, and see ours is even, this is not a natural holiday checklist. This is a spiritual holiday checklist that will affect the natural, and ours is the most important of all. Number one, you ready? Here we go. You ready? Number one, here's a holiday checklist. Here are here. You and I this week are gonna to begin together our holiday, holy day preparations. Number one is you. Check on you. I talked about to you about this last week because that's what the Lord said for me to talk to you about. First of all, you need to do a you check for your heart. Last week, the Lord told me to talk to you about peace, to make sure that remembering you are a carrier of peace. And so you've got to make sure you take care of you. Make sure you get this, the oxygen mask on your face first. Remember we said that. Before you can take care of somebody else, you got to make sure that you can, you've taken care of you. So you make sure you're getting up early with God. Make sure you're spending time alone with God. So you've got the peace of God in your mind. So you've got strength. Make sure you're taking care of yourself spiritually first. And this is what we said last week because it's true. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Why? Because you cannot give what you do not have. You cannot give what you do not have. And your family in this holiday season, they need peace. And you're the carrier of it. You're carrying the Prince of Peace in you. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. And the good thing about giving away stuff in the kingdom is whenever you give away for something of God, it's not like you got less because you've given it away. No, <laughs> the way the kingdom works is when you give away what you have in the spirit, Whoa, you get more. You don't get less. It increases in you. The more you give away, the more you have. Just ask the people that handed out those loaves and fishes what happened when they gave away what God had blessed. So when you give away the things of the Spirit of God, you don't, you're not depleted. You're filled up. But you got to have it first. Jesus could only say, my peace I give to you because he had peace to give. See, honey, you give away something all the time. Whenever we're around people, we're giving away what we've got. Sometimes they don't really need what we've got. 
because what you sure don't want to do in this holiday season when company comes over this this week or over these next few weeks, you don't want to be looking at them going, my stress I give to you. My heaviness I give to you. My worry I give to you. No, nobody wants that. Nobody needs that. I know you don't have to say it verbally. It's just being around you. If you've, if you've got an old heaviness on you, your kids are going to feel that. If you've got old stress on you, everybody in the room is going to feel the stress that you're carrying. So you take care of you. So that when you're cooking this year and you're preparing, you're cleaning, you're getting ready, it will not be stressful. So that when your family comes over, they're going to walk into an atmosphere of peace. Now, number two. First is you. Number two. Let me see which time I got. Ooh, I got to hurry. Number two. You ready? Start declaring over the atmosphere. That's the second thing on your checklist. Right now, I, I do this often. I do it at my house. I do it at the ramp. Just the whole atmosphere. And I'll do this because we'll be in this room tomorrow. So I just start declaring, this atmosphere is filled with the Lordship of Jesus. I command anything in this atmosphere that is not of God to go in Jesus' name. I declare right now, only the presence of God dwells in this room. Come on, you do that over your house. You do that over wherever you're going to be holding your guests or having your guests over for dinner or whatever. You just walk through before anybody gets there. You arrest that atmosphere. What, how do you do that? You begin to declare, Jesus is Lord of this house. And get some worship music going in your house. Before they get there, let the atmosphere, and you just be filled with the presence of God. And you just start walking around worshiping God. Oh, you just walk around glorifying his name and commanding any spirit not of God to get out because you have authority over any spirit that is not of God. So cast it out like Jesus gave you the authority to do. First you, second atmosphere. Take care of the atmosphere. Number three, start declaring this. These are specific things. We've talked about them before. I don't care how many times we talk about it until we get it, all right? I want you to pray this over your children, your family, your siblings, your whoever is coming to your house. And, and like I said, whether even if, even if they're not coming over, you're going to their house or they don't, they're not coming up, you can still pray this. Start peace. And you need to say this out loud. You need to say, in Jesus' name, I declare my children are going to be at peace this holiday season. When they come over to my house, my house is filled with peace. There will be no strife in my house. You need to start saying that. Declare it in Jesus' name. Isaiah 54, 13. Remember that. Write it down on a card and start, start saying it out loud. Isaiah 54, 13, and you can read it in the King James or New Living, either one. Let me make sure it's the right reference. Yes. All of my children will be taught of the Lord, and great will be the peace of my children. Say it and speak it and to speak it to everyone I'm in the spirit realm. This is all before they get there, obviously. And start speaking in the name of Jesus. There's going to be peace between my children. They're not, there's not going to be strife between them. There's not going to be tension between them. My children, all of them are taught of the Lord. And great is the peace that's in them. And great is the peace that's between them. There's peace between me and my children. And my children and me. There's peace between me and my sister. And my extended family. My nieces, my cousins, my mother. my Everybody in my family is going to be at peace. Now, you, peace is powerful. But you've got to decree that word. All right? There's many scriptures on peace, but you've got to speak them. Okay? That's number three. Okay? Peace. Decree it in Jesus' name. Number number whatever this is, three, four, or, yeah, love. Increasing love. Start decreeing this. Over this holiday season, there's going to be a multiplication of love, increase of love. My children love each other. Jesus, you said that we should love one another, so I'm praying according to your will. I pray that my children will love each other, that love between them is increasing. I decree that over, over my children and over my family, Proverbs 18, 24 says, there's a love that sticks closer than a brother. So my children are gonna love, my, let me say, I love to pray this over my girls. My daughters are gonna love each other deeper than siblings because there's a love that sticks closer than a brother. And what kind of love is that? It's Jesus, it's his love. That's who he's talking about. And so, 
Proverbs 13, I mean, sorry, not Proverbs 13, 1 Corinthians 13 describes perfect love and what it is. So you just start saying, over my children, they operate in perfect love. They operate in 1 Corinthians 13 love. Say it out loud. My children have 1 Corinthians 13 love between them. They don't hold grudges. They forget the things from the past that's hurt them. They, you just decree, their love bears all. Just incre pray increase of love in my family, between me and my siblings, between everybody. My whole family is experiencing a revival of love between each other. And here's the deal. Love is the most powerful weapon there is in the universe. There's not a greater force than love because God is love. And love is a pot. Love will destroy fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Love will crush offenses. So do, believe with me that during this holiday season for your family, people that are offended with each other, that's coming over for the holidays, that that love is just going to cause that offense of the past to melt. It's just going to cause it to melt. Love is that powerful. But you have got to pray it and decree it. Okay, I'm running out of time. I got to hurry. The next one, I think I'm on number five. I don't know. Honor. Start decreeing. My children will honor one another, as the Bible says for us to do. I don't have time for all the references. My children will honor and decree. My husband and I, we're going to honor each other, as the Bible tells us to do as spouses. The Bible says that, that we should honor each other in this, our spiritual family. We should honor each other in our spouses. And then it says in Ephesians 6, 2 and 3, it says this. Children, obey your parents or honor your father and mother. Honor. Little children, obey. Adult children, honor. And here's the deal. In the Ten Commandments, in Exodus, and in Ephesians 6, to honor your parents is the promise that comes, is the, is the commandment that comes with a promise. You will have a long life and things will go well with you. So whenever I pray for my children to honor me, and my husband, it's not because I'm just wanting something for me. I want it for them because I want them to live long on the earth and it to go and things to go well with them. It's to their advantage. So pray that over your children. Lord, I pray all of my children will honor their fathers and their mothers. Pray that over your whole family, that our whole family will honor each other. Honor is the atmosphere of the kingdom of God. It's the atmosphere of heaven. There's always reward to honor. So pray that. Pray that this holiday season, your whole family is going to honor each other. One other one, number six, I think. Truth. Pray that this holiday season, your family is going to walk in a revelation of truth like they've never had. Protection over the conversations. Let's decree this. And you can say this out loud, and you should, over every one of them. Call them by name, especially those that are in deception. Say, John 8, 31 and 32 says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Before they get to your house or before you talk to them on the phone, start saying that. John 8, 31 through 32. Say, so and so, you will know the truth, and the truth is going to set you free. Come on, your children that are in deception, it doesn't. You, I'm telling you, the word of God is stronger than their deception. Deception. You've got to believe that. So you've got to speak it before they get there. And I love 3 John 4. 3 John verse 4. I have no greater joy than to know my children walk in truth. So just decree that. All of my children are going to walk in truth. All of my children, they're not only going to walk in peace. They're not only going to walk in love and honor. They're going to walk in truth. And just decree right now, deception has no place in my family. We will not be moved by the lies of this culture. We do not believe them. We will have no agreement with them. My children, my family will walk in truth. And even if they're in deception tonight, I'm telling you, you keep decreeing the word of truth. Remember, truth is not a thing. It's a person. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm truth. So you're decreeing, my children will know the truth and the truth will set them free. That means my children will know Jesus and he's going to set them free. That's the power of the word. Oh, we got to hurry quick. Look, number what? Seven, protection. Let's agree for this. Psalms 91 verses 11 and 12, I believe it is. It says that the angels of the Lord surround those that fear God and they protect them 
So you and I agree that over your family this holiday season, even if they're traveling wherever they go, they're going to have protection, body, soul, and spirit. Let's agree for protection in every conversation that's at a dinner table or in the kitchen where you're cooking or in wherever you are. Every conversation, protection. Invite angels to come to your holiday season this year. Tell them, just pray, God, let my house be filled with angels. Angels that protect. Angels that just keep. Just pray that. You've got permission from the Word of God to pray like that. And I love that protection in every way. And then I don't have time to go into these. There's a bunch more, but you can pray wisdom. You can pray. I'll, we'll talk about those another week. Remember, the greater one is in you. The greater one is in you. We'll talk about that one later too. Now, we're going to close here. This holiday season over these next few weeks, I believe in these comments, we're going to get blasted a testimony after test. We may have to have one front porch where it ain't nothing but a testimony service of what God has done in your family. Oh, sweetheart, it's going to be a season of miracles. I believe that. Just start commenting right now. Say, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. Start commenting right now saying, I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm believing. I'm believing. Say, it will be as God has said. It will be as God has said. Start commenting right now and just decreeing truth over my children, peace over my family, love over all of us. Just start decreeing what you are praying. Will you do that right now? Comment. It's important that we agree together in the comments. All right? Now, remember this. Even if in this holiday season, like I said a while ago, maybe they're not coming to your house this year. Or maybe you're going to theirs. Doesn't matter. Even if nobody's coming, and even if nobody's calling you this holiday season, even if they've blocked you from everything, they can't block the prayers that you are praying. Do you remember in the, in the book of Matthew, go read it tonight, Matthew 8, start with verse 7, when the centurion servant was sick, and Jesus you know, was willing to go to his house, and the centurion servant looked at Jesus, and he said, oh, I'm not even worthy for you to come in my house. Just send the word and he'll be healed. Well, you know what? You may can't go to their house, but all you gotta do is send the word. The same Jesus that sent the word to the centurion servant and the boy was healed, that same Jesus is in you. And when he speaks his word, you can send the word to your children's house. Even if they're not speaking to you, send it anyway. Send the word of peace over them. Send the word of conviction. Send the word, you're gonna know truth. Just send the word out of your mouth and keep praying until it's going to happen because his word does not return void. This is the season prodigals are coming home. It's the season prodigals are coming home. Will you declare that? In the comment, put my prodigal is coming home if you've got one. Put, put it in all capital letters with a bunch of exclamation marks. My prodigal is coming home in Jesus' name. In the comments put, I've started my holiday preparation. Amen. In Jesus' name, peace over you tonight. I pray strength over you, my sweet friend. Okay? In Jesus' name. It's going to be the best. I can't wait to hear from you. And we'll just talk about this over the next few weeks of what God is going to do. I love you, sweetheart. And I'll talk to you soon. All right? Okay.